What is up YouTube? Carlo here. Welcome to the vlog. This is the channel where we talk about sneakers and tech. And for this episode, I'm doing my review of the off-white Nike Air Prestos in black. In case you guys haven't subscribed yet, please make sure that you do so. Why? Because we are giving away a brand new Pure Boost in your size the moment we hit 40,000 subscribers. We're at 37,000 as of publishing this video. So we're literally just a few days or a few weeks away before we do the giveaway. Make sure that you're subscribed so you're part of the pool that we draw from. This is considered to be a hype beast, overpriced, hype driven, super expensive, trendy sneaker. But to me, this is actually such an important sneaker in my sneaker head career, mainly because it changed the way I looked at sneakers. It changed the way I reviewed sneakers on this channel. Why is that? Uh, on Because this is the sneaker that made me appreciate the story behind sneakers. This is the sneaker that made me appreciate the story behind the designer behind the sneakers. That's how important of a sneaker this is to me personally. And that's why if you guys notice some of the reviews that I've done in the past few days, I really touch on the history, the philosophy, and the creative inspiration of a lot of the sneakers that come on this channel. And that all started when I picked this sneaker up. And it's actually all thanks to one guy, his name is Boom Gonzalez, because the guy literally schooled me, schooled me when I called, when I think I messaged him on IG and he said the Air, Air Vapor Max 95 looked ugly. And then he comes back and just literally floors me with the history of the 95 and how revolutionary it was at that time, with how it was designed, with the way that the soil was supposed to erode and reveal something. Man, I was just completely blown away. And he also told me, of the story of the Prestos and I was just man these sneakers have so much story in them they have so I mean it is mind-blowing the amount of history and legacy that can be found on a sing on this pair of you know cloth mesh uh, and rubber and glue when I look at the Nike Air Prestos uh, Off-White, I immediately think of one picture. It's the picture of Virgil Abloh, of course, the founder of Off-White, hugging Kanye West uh, after he did the show uh, in Paris when he debuted as the creative director, of course, the male creative director, men's creative director uh, of Louis Vuitton. Now, why is that picture so powerful? Because as it turns out, the two were actually intermates in Fendi and their stories are intertwined and combined at such a very insane level. So they started as 20-something interns in 2009 at Fendi. Kanye West was so impressed, he hired Virgil Abloh a year later as the creative director of his creative agency. I think it was called Donda or Danda. And then after that, he would later on ask him to be the artistic director for his album with Jay-Z, Watch the Throne. And it just blows up all the way from there. Uh, Virgil puts up his own uh, streetwear label, Fails, the first one, but it was really more of an experiment. But the second one would be Off-White. And everything would be really blow up 2017 when he would work on the collaboration with Nike for the 10. The 10 were the 10 best-selling sneakers and most classic and iconic sneakers of Nike. And that pretty much set the pace for a lot of the trends that you see in streetwear and in fashion today. And that's why that image of them hugging is so powerful. Because imagine that, they started as interns in 2009. Kanye is doing his easy thing, Virgil is doing his off-white thing, and it's just pure madness with how those two are, are literally killing it right now with what they're doing. So that's the off-white Virgil story. That's one part of this sneaker. The second part is the Presto. And now what's the story behind the Presto? It actually started in 1996 with Toby Hatfield. I think he's the brother of uh, Tinker Hatfield, or the guy who did the Jordan 3 up, up to the 15. And, and Toby was really just trying to come up with the best running shoe ever. And he, he wanted to do two things, come up with the most comfortable one and come up with the best fit possible. His journey started in 1996, which led all the way up to 2000. He actually came out with two sneakers to be able to try to, I don't know, which would precede or come before the Presto. Now, 2000 is the year where the Presto was actually officially born. Now, what Toby did was he was actually just looking for the best upper to be able to suit the Duralon and the Phylon midsole, which is the best running technology at that time, uh, building on the learnings that he had with the clip at the back for the best containment possible and that more relaxed V-notch that he came up with in 1998 or 1996. So for the, for the upper, they settled with the new material at that time called Spacer Mesh. Spacer Mesh was not being used in fashion. It was used in the medical industry. It's a fabric that's composed of three layers, an upper, a lower part, and a thin layer in the middle that connected both the upper and the lower part. Spacer mesh was very flexible, very breathable, and very comfortable. And they used it 
for the Presto. And it became such a huge hit because it was so comfortable and at that time also it became so cool. Why? Because they actually seeded it to the 2000 Olympic team, US Olympic team, and it just blew up from there. Three more interesting things about the Presto. Number one, the name is that was actually crowdsourced. They asked people to come up with names, they submitted them, and somebody said, what do you say if it's magical? You say Presto, so that's why it's called the Presto. Number two, you see the five eyelets here that function as, of course, you know, to hold the laces. They're actually inspired by fingers, so there are five. It's like holding your foot down and giving better lock, foot lockdown and containment. And lastly, they actually called it the t-shirt for your feet because when they came out with the original sizing, they didn't say 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the typical uh, sneaker sizing. They came out with t-shirt sizes, small, large, medium, extra large. And that was really crazy at that time and really garnered a lot of buzz and conversation. Now, I may have missed stuff with my retelling of the history and I apologize for that. But my main point is, you have Virgil, who has such an interesting story as a creator, as a fashion designer. You have the story of the Presto, which is storied in itself and just filled with so much legacy of technology and innovation. And that, both of those come together with the off-white Prestos. So now let's get to the review of the sneaker. Man, that was like the longest intro ever for a review. When it comes to the off-white Nike Air Prestos, uh, there are, there's just two things I want to point out. Number one, for a sneaker that came out in 2000, comparing it to a lot of the sneakers that I have today, be it the Ultra Boost, uh, the Nike Epic React, and a bunch of others that are considered to be the most comfortable, this is one hell of a comfortable sneaker, guys. I mean that Duralon and Pylon midsole does the job excellently of cushioning and giving your feet excellent support. I mean, it is insanely comfortable. And this is really meant to be a beater. And I'm, I'm glad they got it in black because I was originally thinking of getting it in white. I'm glad that it's black because I will wear the heck out of this because it is, ex man, it is so comfortable on feet. I, I mean, everything from the spacer mesh on the upper to that really cushiony midsole and outsole and the, and the perfect foot lock lockdown. I have nothing bad to say when it comes to the comfort that this sneaker offers to anybody. What I don't understand though is this large chunk of foam that they put on top which sort of like acts like a shield. I really don't know what it's for. <laughs> I mean, probably it's just more for aesthetics because I really don't understand what this thing is for. I mean, yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh, probably mostly aesthetic in nature. Now, when it comes to aesthetics, of course, it takes up that popular trendy off-white vibe and feel where it's deconstructed. A lot of the imperfections are showing, which is the signature, of course, of Virgil Abloh. It even includes, of course, this red zip tag, which by the way, uh, forgive me for being such an uncle or a tito or an old guy. I really had to Google how to position this properly because it didn't come in the right way at the default. So initially, it just comes hung on this first finger. You actually have to hang it on both so that it just looks better. So yeah, to people who are thinking of buying it, remember that. Being that it's black, it's so easy to wear. It's so versatile. It can be worn with shorts. You can wear it with jeans. You can wear it with joggers. That's how much I love this sneaker. And I've been actually been wearing it often. I've been wearing it a lot. And that, I think, is what makes this sneaker even more special because it's a sneaker that I bought into the history. It's a sneaker that I bought into the story and the legacy. And at the same time, it's a sneaker that I just absolutely love wearing every day. Though all of those elements make it such a fantastic buy in my book. Now the question is, is the Off-White Air Prestos worth it? Are you guys thinking of copying one? If you are going to buy a resale, it really depends on your budget if you can afford it. If you can afford it, then why not go ahead, knock yourselves out. But my suggestion is, if you just wait, because Virgil is probably coming out with a lot of other sneakers down the line, and most of his collaborations anyway are with storied and historical sneakers uh, that have a lot of stories behind them anyway. So just buy whatever you can for retail, and then dig into the history of the sneaker so that you can appreciate it better. If there's anything I want you to take out of this video is this. If you take a look at any sneaker that you have in your, in your shelf, all of them probably have amazing stories behind them. Stories of the origins of the sneaker, stories of the designer, his philosophy, his creative inspiration. My suggestion, research it, Google it, look into it, immerse yourself in the story behind your sneakers. Because one thing that you can do to avoid hype 
is to be content and happy with what you already have. I think that's the best tip that I can give you guys because that ultimately, if you're able to appreciate what you have and that tactic of really reading into it, uh, getting deeper into the story of the sneaker will really get you to know the sneaker more intimately and more personally and more emotionally. And that can act as a shield, that can act as a guard for your heart and for your brain so that you don't get driven by hype to buy stuff that you don't actually need to impress people that you don't actually like. So <laughs> that's the best tip that I can give you guys today. Learn the story, know the designer, know the inspiration behind it, buy into it. And then after all of those things, believe me when I say that you will love your sneakers more, you will love what you have more, and you will protect yourself from being, you know, taken, I don't know, forcefully by the hype that's so prevalent these days in social media by influencers and people like me on YouTube who review sneakers. But <laughs> you guys get what I mean. So that's actually it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know it's a bit long and at the same time, I just hope you guys learned something from this vlog because I had so much fun uh, just researching and putting everything together for you. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Shoe Freak PH. He's the guy who hooked me up on this. Uh, one of the most trusted resellers that I know. Uh, if you guys are looking for, you know, rare sneakers that aren't available in the Philippines, hit him down below. I'll put a link to his Instagram account. Highly trust the guy. And I think if you will buy resale, might as well buy resale from trusted sources. That's it for now. Have a great weekend, you all. Peace. God bless. Next level.